Okay, here we have the walk around video for the Compass Knight 600E. This uh, review is sponsored by KBDD LLC, Common Sense RC, and Heli Direct. We'll just do a little bit of walking around here, show you the, some of the features of the Knight 600E. Well, why don't we start with the uh, tail system. The tail on the Knight is uh, really a good design. As you can see, it's got the over and under, I don't know how else you would describe it, the over and under pitch slider, so that it's actually uh, activated from both the top and the bottom. This, is, this gives you a really good slop-free tail and uh, very smooth tail action. Tremendous amount of throw available. You can see how much pitch is available on the blades. It's amazing. So it gives you a very powerful tail. Uh, the tail blades are the uh, KB, KBDD tail blades. They're, uh, of course, not quite as stiff as carbon, but they work very well. Certainly better than your typical plastic tail blades. Nice thing, of course, is the visibility. It uh, really shows up in the air. The tail box is a uh, nice design. It's got a little molded emboss right here where you can put in a, a bolt as an anti rotation. It also has the molded in little uh, pip on the inside that keys in with a slot in the tail bone, so you've got perfect alignment. Uh, the tail fins are G10. Tail boom struts are aluminum. Uh, it's got the, a wire push rod with very nice guides, as you can see, uh, that keeps it from flexing. Tail boom mounted servo, so you can adjust your uh, belt tension without having to worry about messing up your trim. Nice place to mount the gyro, uh, running a JR770 3D. Very good gyro, I'm very impressed with it. Um, really good feel, very similar to the nice solid feel you get with a 401, but extremely quick as well. I do have a step down regulator that's uh, in this little convenient pocket here with a velcro strap over it because I am running six volts to the servos but of course you need a step down for the uh, 8900G tail servo. On the side here conveniently mounted to the frame, let's go ahead and remove the canopy so you can see this a little better. This is the Hobbywing Platinum 120 amp high voltage controller. Um, after doing some data logging this is kind of overkill. You really don't need 120 amp speed control. I'm maxing out at about 79 amps. So an 85, 80 to 85 would be plenty. Um, you can see how nice and neat this installs though because it has a, a mounting board on the back and it actually just bolts to the frame, which is really quite nice. This is the stock outrunner that's provided with the kit. Uh, spin it around here. It's a 760 kV, 8 pole. It actually says 16 there where I counted the magnets, but the magnets are actually paired up, so it is an 8 pole motor. It's an 87 tooth main gear with Mod 1 gears. You can see it's quite the beefy gear. And um, what you can't probably see, the way the motor is mounted is very unique. There's no adjustment for gear lash. Uh, it's just, it's set, preset for the 10 tooth pinion. And you can see the two bolts here. This actually is a, an upper bearing block, so there is a uh, the front part of the motor pinion is actually going into a ball bearing at the top. So the motor shaft is supported at the ends with a ball bearing, which is really nice. It removes the loading on the motor. Should last a long time. Uh, the tail, of course, is belt driven. Nice wide belt. Works very well. Your uh, bearing blocks are removable. Swash plate is all metal. Everything you see here in the head is stock as it comes in the kit. You've got the metal center hub, the metal seesaw, and the uh, metal washout base. Of course, the metal hub, it does clamp as well as having a Jesus bolt through it. Uh, the washout arms are plastic. I'm quite okay with that. They're fusible links. The blade grips are also plastic, but they're really beefy. And they're quite strong, as I found out on the first spool up when I had the throttle curve set just a bit too high and tacked 2500 RPM. And it didn't come apart, so it's, uh, it's a strong machine. It's an 8mm spindle. Huge, huge steel spindle in there. Of course, there's uh, thrust and radial bearings in both the main and tail grips. And let's see, moving on down to the linkages. Pretty straightforward. Uh, it's, it's 
CCPM, of course. You've got your uh, push rods here, push pull links. One nice little feature is this little hole in the frame is used as an alignment to make sure that this bell crank is in the proper position when you're setting everything up. Uh, you've got a nice CNC elevator A arm control that also serves as your anti rotation link. So there's no separate anti rotation link here. Um, get this out of the way. Receiver is mounted up front. Your batteries here, as you can see, you've got a lot of space for batteries. There's, there's a whole lot of air in this frame. So it's, it's a fairly light helicopter for its size, of course. Um, this is a pair of 4-cell 3700 milliamp packs from Common Sense RC. They are 35C rated, which is monster overkill for this helicopter. Um, it, it, it doesn't need packs that are that highly rated, but they run very cool, which is good. They should last a long time. Uh, hiding in here on this little frame stiffener piece is a Medusa Potentia BEC, high voltage BEC. And it's providing 6 volts to the system and of course, like I mentioned, the step down to the tail here. And let's see, moving around to the other side. Uh, we've got the satellite receiver for my AR7000. The other two cyclic servos. And um, that's about it. It's a very straightforward setup. As you can see, you've got a lot of room to move these battery packs around for CG reasons. These are probably the smallest and lightest packs you would want to run. And mounting them right up to the front like that, it puts the CG right on. And uh, that's pretty much it. We'll, we'll do some, show you some flying videos and some data logs and lots of pictures. Hope you enjoyed this walk around. We'll see you next time.